amidst this diversity is a unifying force. Beautiful settings that decorate our landscape, creating some of the most majestic and challenging golf courses found throughout the world. Golf found its way to Northern California late in the 19th century. In 1893, the Burlingame Country Club became the first club in California to offer members a chance to play when they opened a three-hole golf course. Two years later, four principals in the firm of Balfour Guthrie founded the San Francisco Golf Club. The club moved in 1911 to its current site and the great A.W. Tillinghast finished designing the layout in 1918. Most putting greens in Northern California were created with a mixture of sand and oil. The oil helped prevent the sand from blowing away. One exception was the Del Monte Golf Course in Monterey. Founded in 1897 as an amenity of the Del Monte Hotel, it featured grass greens. In December of that same year, 20 business leaders agreed to form the Oakland Golf Club. And the following year, 1898, San Rafael Golf Club opened as the first course in California to offer 18 holes. The beginning clubs like San Francisco, Burlingame, San Rafael, and Oakland got together and promoted uh, inter-club matches. And it was on the strength of that that they began to form the foundation for an association. And then the Northern California Golf Association kind of spun off that in the early 1900s. And we've now identified that date as April 5th, 1901. The first NCGA tournament was held in January of 1903 at the Presidio in San Francisco. It was a one-day affair featuring 36 holes of golf and was won by H.C. Gulcher. In April of that same year, the first NCGA Amateur Championship was held at San Rafael. A.G. Harvey not only won the inaugural event, he repeated the following year. By 1906, the NCGA had grown to include Menlo Golf and Country Club and Linda Vista Golf Club, which became San Jose Country Club later that year. Northern California embraced the game. In 1910, the NCGA's bylaws were to provide for an amateur championship each year, open to its members, to schedule annual tournaments for its members so they shall not conflict, and to promote the interests of the game of golf. The growth of golf included men and women of all ages who could afford to play, and in 1911, Green's fees at San Francisco were a dollar a day and 50 cents for half a day. Early in the 20th century, Oakland Golf Club became the Claremont Country Club. Shortly thereafter, Claremont established itself as the course where the champions lived. It was the home of Horace Rollins, who won the first ever United States Open in 1895, and Willie Anderson, who won the Open a record time four times. It was also home of the Smith Brothers, sons of the club's first groundskeeper. Alex Smith was a two-time U.S. Open champion. Willie won the Open once, and McDonald was twice a runner-up. In 1912, Jack Neville, also the son of a Claremont groundskeeper, won the first California State Amateur and would go on to win the NCGA Amateur in 1913. Later in his career, Neville would co-design Pebble Beach with Douglas Grant. Claremont's course was also the site of Sam Snead's first professional victory at the 1937 Oakland Open. Let me tell you about the first time I met Sam Snead, 1937, Oakland Open. Fred Corcoran, the new PGA supervisor of the tour, said, would I come with Snead to breakfast? So I did, and it turns out that Sam Snead was the winner of the tournament, his first win on tour. By 1917, there were nine member clubs in the NCGA as Sequoia, Santa Cruz, and Peninsula Golf and Country Club had enlisted. Peninsula was designed by the legendary Donald Ross, who also created Pinehurst No. 2. Other courses would soon join the NCGA, including Harding Park, Lake Merced, Lincoln Park, and Sunnyside Country Club in Fresno. With its increased growth, the NCGA added a variety of tournaments to the amateur championship, including a ladies event and a senior amateur championship. 
It was during this time that two of the most recognizable creations in all of golf were founded on the Monterey Peninsula, Cypress Point and Pebble Beach. Situated against the backdrop of the Pacific Ocean, Pebble Beach opened in 1919 as the second course of the Del Monte Country Club. Pebble was the first championship course in the country to feature an underground irrigation system from tea to green. Jim Barnes, the 1921 U.S. Open champion, who actually came over from Great Britain, had probably the best line when he first experienced Pebble Beach Golf Links when he said, the course is too damn beautiful, I cannot keep my mind on the game. The course would go on to play a pivotal role in American golf history. In 1947, Pebble Beach hosted the final round of the Bing Crosby National Pro-Am for the first time. When Crosby decided to come to Pebble Beach uh, and bring the pros here, it actually gave Pebble Beach itself the golf course to the world. It has also been the scene of many national championships, including the record-breaking performance by Tiger Woods in 2000, when his 12 under par gave him a 15-stroke margin of victory, the largest in the history of major championship golf. Most importantly to the NCGA, Pebble Beach has hosted the California Golf Association State Amateur since its first championship, primarily through the dedication of Samuel F. B. Morse, whose love of the amateur game compelled him to modify the course to attract the championship. When I started to cover golf, amateur golf was something big. The California State Amateur Championship at Pebble Beach drew as much as 10,000 people there because the amateurs were big. The event has seen a host of great champions from both the North and South. Names like Jack Neville, Charlie Seaver, Gene Littler, Ken Venturi, Johnny Miller, and Mark O'Meara. In 2001, Pebble Beach was named the number one course in the United States by Golf Digest magazine. One year earlier, Golf Digest rated the Monterey area as the greatest golf destination in the world. Another course that has enhanced the image of golf in the region is Cypress Point. Designed by Scotsman Alistair McKenzie in 1928, the course hugs the Pacific Ocean and features a scenic and spectacular setting. There was some discussion of setting up the 16th hole as a par three with a long carry over the water. And as McKenzie said, as a Scotsman, I'm naturally opposed to water in its undiluted state. But Marion Hollins convinced him that it really was worth it. And he said, nobody's gonna be able to make that shot. And she said, sure. And she dropped the ball, grabbed the club, and hit it across. And McKenzie said, that's good enough for me and built the 16th the way it is today. Among McKenzie's many other brilliant creations is a course he co-designed with the great Bobby Jones in the early 1930s. It's called Augusta National. Courses continue to open throughout Northern California, including one of Dr. McKenzie's most beloved designs, Pasatiempo, a club he would eventually call home. It opened on September 8, 1929, as the inspiration of Marion Hollins, the preeminent women's amateur champion of her day, Opening day featured an exhibition match with Bobby Jones and Glenna Collette Vare. It became a favorite getaway for celebrities like Mary Pickford, Will Rogers, Ty Cobb, and Bing Crosby. Crosby's cohort, Bob Hope, enjoyed playing golf on many occasions at Fort Washington Country Club in Fresno. Others who played there included Danny Thomas and Charlie Seaver, who joined the club in 1939. The Presidio, built on an army base, not only entertained celebrities, but was also used for military maneuvers when Teddy Roosevelt drilled his troops on its fairways. Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clipper, was a member there for 35 years. His locker remains untouched to this day. According to Sam Sneed, Sonoma National, which was founded in the late 1920s as Sonoma Golf Club, was the best course layout he had ever played. In addition to McKenzie, Tillinghast and Ross Others who designed courses in Northern California during the golden age of course architecture included Robert Muir Graves. Among his creations was Mountain Springs Golf Club and Bob Baldock, whose many designs include the shore course at Monterey Peninsula Country Club. With the advent of so many great courses during this era, 
golf in Northern California attracted great national attention. In 1925, George Von Elm would win his only NCGA competition, the amateur. But a year later, he would add significant prestige to the title as he defeated Bobby Jones in the 1926 U.S. Amateur. Von Elm was the only player to defeat Jones in the national championship during a five-year period. One year after Jones' remarkable run, the United States Golf Association brought the U.S. Amateur to Northern California for the first time. In 1929, Harrison Johnston won the event at Pebble Beach. That national championship began an unprecedented run of memorable moments at USGA events staged during the rest of the 20th century in Northern California. In 1955, the first United States Open held in the region was at the Olympic Club in San Francisco. Ben Hogan was seeking a record fifth U.S. Open championship, but Jack Fleck birdied two of the last three holes to force a playoff and then shocked the golf world with a victory over the disappointed Hogan. Eleven years later, the Olympic Club again hosted an Open, and Arnold Palmer, holding a seven-stroke lead with nine holes to play, had one of the most remarkable collapses in golf history. Arnie's army went home frustrated as he eventually lost to Billy Casper in a playoff. In 1972, at Pebble Beach, Jack Nicklaus, the 20th century's greatest golfer, won his third of four U.S. Opens, exhibiting a spectacular display of his abilities. Ten years later, Tom Watson's incredible birdie chip on the 71st hole at Pebble Beach allowed him to win his only U.S. Open and prevented Nicklaus from winning a record fifth time. Nathaniel Crosby, son of Ben Crosby, took home the U.S. Amateur Championship at the Olympic Club in 1981. Hello. Good. Hello. How about that? The first U.S. Women's Open held in Northern California was at Del Paso Country Club in 1982 and was won by Janet Alex. The 1990s saw the U.S. Open visit the Northern California region twice. In 1992, Tom Kite claimed the championship at Pebble Beach, and Lee Jansen won his second U.S. Open in 1998 at the Olympic Club. It seemed only fitting that Northern California hosted the final U.S. Amateur Championship of the last millennium. It was held at Pebble Beach, and David Gossett defeated Sung Yoon Kim to win the 99th Amateur Championship. While national events have given much notoriety to Northern California, the success of the NCGA has continued to be measured by the growth of our own tournaments. When the NCGA bylaws were changed dramatically in 1927, it significantly altered championship play throughout the region. From that time forward, participants in NCGA tournaments had to belong to a Northern California member club. Also, any club located in Northern California and incorporated under state laws was now eligible for membership, thus opening the door for public links to join the organization. In 1932, the first public links championship was held at Lake Chabot Club and was won by Roy Wiggins, a member playing on his home course. The junior championship was also established during this era. Ernie Peeper was the first winner in 1930 and Don Haslett of Claremont Country Club won in 1936 at the Presidio. In 1930, the Stanford University Golf Course opened, co-designed by George Thomas and the prolific Billy Bell, who felt no other course of his was superior. That golf course, uh, you know, obviously has played an important role in the whole development of golf in Northern California and has provided some great players. When you start talking about uh, Lawson Little and Charlie Seaver, in the early 30s, Little was the leading amateur in the country. The son of a colonel, he learned to play the game at the Presidio. In 1928, he won the first of his two NCGA amateur titles at the age of 17, with the help of a hole-in-one. In 1932, his Stanford teammate, Charlie Seaver, won his first NCGA amateur championship at San Jose. A year later, the future president of the NCGA and longtime luminary in California golf defended his title. I've got a lot of appreciation and, and, and respect for you know his accomplishments as a as a true amateur, uh, which is somebody that you know started out playing amateur golf and stayed an amateur throughout their entire career. Charlie Seaver had the ultimate honor bestowed upon him in 1997 
when a biannual competition was created between teams from the NCGA and the Southern California Golf Association. The event was named the Seaver Cup. I just feel very much honored. The recognition of that is, is very, very heartwarming and something that just makes it all seem worthwhile. Seaver's alma mater has continued to leave a lasting impression on the world of golf, having helped produce such notables as Tiger Woods, Tom Watson, Noda Begay, and Joel Kreibel, winner of the 93 NCGA Junior Boys Championship and the 95 Four Ball Stroke Play Championship, as well as former USGA presidents Sandy Tatum and Grant Spade, both great ambassadors for the game. In 1938, Hazel Thompson began her 28-year career as assistant secretary for the NCGA. One year later, the organization opened a new office in downtown San Francisco. Bob Hanna joined Hazel there in 1956. When I started, we had uh, a one-room office on the ninth floor of the Financial Center building at the corner of California and Montgomery Street in San Francisco. Hanna's tenure began with the creation of a quarterly bulletin and handicap ratings that were distributed to member clubs. By 1957, the NCGA had 30,000 members and Belmont Country Club in Fresno became the 100th club to join the organization. The post-war era produced many fine golfers in Northern California, including U.S. Amateur Public Links champion Vern Callison, three-time NCGA junior champion Eddie Fry, Eli Barato, winner of both the junior and 72-hole stroke play amateur championships, and longtime Claremont pro Talbert Smith, who was a two-time winner of the amateur and four-time 72-hole amateur champion. Ralph Hall became only the second player to win three straight NCGA amateur titles, the first being Frank Newton almost 40 years earlier. Former PGA champion and longtime ABC sports announcer Bob Rosberg had success early on, winning both the junior and the amateur. But his most famous Northern California victory might have been at the age of 12 when he defeated Baseball Hall of Famer Ty Cobb for the Olympic Club Championship. I had a good day. He didn't have a very good one. And I beat him pretty badly. I think I beat him seven and six. And uh, of course, I wasn't allowed in the locker room. But uh, what I heard afterwards is they gave him a pretty rough time in the locker room. Harvey Ward, a 72-hole amateur champion, was a repeat winner at the U.S. Amateur in 1955 and 56. Ken Venturi, the Dean of Golf Announcers, has worked for CBS Sports since 1968. But long before he became a national celebrity, he was an NCGA Junior Champion, and in 1952, he won his second 72-hole amateur championship. Twelve years later, Venturi staggered to victory in the 1964 U.S. Open, providing all of America and the world with one of the most dramatic victories the game has ever seen. I don't think I would have reached the heights I have, with, uh, but the experience that I've had in Northern California with all the people that were so kind to me and, and uh, helped me along the way. And I'll always be indebted to there. And, and the memories that I have of all around the world, my fondest memories come out of Northern California. George Archer won a major championship as well, the 1969 Masters. The San Francisco native honed his skills by winning the NCGA 72-hole amateur championship in 1960. During that decade, John Lotz became the third player to win the NCGA amateur three times in a row. He started the run by sinking a 10-foot downhill putt for the win in 61. Ron Ceruta won the amateur twice in 1964 and 65. Others who found success in NCGA championships in that era included Steve Whitman, the junior champion in 1961 and in 65, the 72-hole amateur and Johnny Miller, the 1963 junior and 1964 72-hole amateur. Ten years after his junior victory, Miller provided the sports world with one of the greatest finishes in golf history by firing a 63 on the final day of the 1973 U.S. Open at Oakmont to come from behind for the victory. In addition to all the great players that have come from Northern California, a lot of our, our TV announcers now and analysts uh, on all the major networks are Northern California products. And I don't really know why that is that so many of them have come from 
Northern California, perhaps it's the no accent. Nobody can tell a Northern California accent because there really isn't one. Miller has since gone on to great success with NBC Sports. In addition to Miller, Venturi, and Rosberg, Northern California has produced many other golf personalities, including three former PGA Tour players from the region. Mark Lye, 1976 NCGA Junior Champion Bobby Clampett. When you have an ability to play that kind of competition at that age, that prepares you so much for when you get into the pros and even beyond. And a guy I remember well, the 1972 NCGA Amateur Champion, Roger Malti. The rest of the golf world trusts these people, and, and they've been uh, great ambassadors for our game, as, in addition to being great players. My victory, as well as Bobby Clampett's, took place at Spyglass Hill on the Monterey Peninsula. Spyglass opened in 1966 and was designed by Robert Trent Jones, Sr., one of the great architects in the last 50 years. My dad's idea was essentially to use the great examples of the two most prestigious eastern courses, Pine Valley and Augusta National, for each of those settings. NCGA board members were responsible for attaining most of the funds needed to build Spyglass. And Spyglass became the headquarters for the organization, as well as becoming the home course for the NCGA Amateur Championship, which has been played there every year but one since 1966. The association has scheduled 30 tournament days a year at Spyglass until 2016. One year after Spyglass opened, green fees at Pebble Beach went from $9 to $12. The 70s saw other great champions emerge or re-emerge from within the NCGA ranks. Ernie Peeper of San Jose Country Club won the NCGA Senior in 1970. It was 40 years after his victory in the first NCGA Junior Championship. Peeper added another senior title in 1973. Ernie Peeper uh, was a very good, solid golfer. He played out of San Jose, and uh, in fact, I played with him and I played against him. Golf was his life. Ernie was a fantastic golfer, but he had a little less of an eyesight, and every time he would hit a ball, he would say, where to go, where to go? And obviously, nine times out of 10, it was either right down the middle or three feet from the flagstick. Mike Powers and Mitch Thomas would each repeat as winners at the Public Links Championship. Tom Culligan, a four-time four-ball stroke champion, would win the amateur in 1974. Later in the decade, Brian Peeney, who believed that his first win was due in part to his colorful pants, would lengthen the hem of those same pants a year later and repeat at the amateur. 1981 marked a changing of the guard with the retirement of Bob Hanna, who had served the NCGA for 25 years. That year also marked a major growth for the NCGA as the associate club program was launched. We encompass all golf, public, private, military, and we even encompass people that didn't even play on a golf course, they just had clubs within their business or social clubs. Associate clubs are groups of 20 players or more not associated with a golf course, but with a common interest in the game. The first year, there were 15 associate clubs in the NCGA. Today, there are more than 700. During the 1980s, notable players included 1982 amateur champion Bill Malley, 1986 amateur champion Kevin Sutherland, and Dean Prince, 1985 master division champion and U.S. Amateur Public Links Champion. On June 1, 1986, the NCGA reached a high point as a long-standing goal was realized. Poppy Hills Golf Course, located in the Del Monte Forest, opened, owned and operated exclusively by the Northern California Golf Association. The reason for Poppy Hills was that it became almost an imposition on the member clubs to ask them to give up their golf courses to hold one of the association tournaments. So at that stage of the game, it began to be obvious that the association needed a golf course that they could call their own. The NCGA was the first amateur golf association to own its own course. This much heralded layout was designed by Robert Trent Jones, Jr. Other golf associations are considering building um, golf courses, but still they took the risk, took the chance, and kind of were truly pioneers in the true pioneer spirit of 
of California. Since opening, Poppy Hills has been a bargain for NCGA members and has continually hosted numerous NCGA championships. In addition, Poppy Hills hosted the NC2A Golf Championship in 1991. That year also was the first year Poppy Hills replaced Cypress Point in the rotation of the AT&T Pebble Beach National Pro-Am. The real impact of Poppy Hills was that people had the feeling that yes, now they belong to Poppy Hills and therefore they belong to the association. The opening of Poppy Hills coincided with a major development for the NCGA. The staff moved into offices located at the golf course and a quarterly magazine now called NCGA Golf was launched. Within months, the association's membership eclipsed 100,000 for the first time. And by 1995, the NCGA became the largest regional golf association in the world, a distinction that we still proudly hold. In 1996, the NCGA called on the services of another Jones son, Reese, who created the association's second facility, Poppy Ridge, in the East Bay City of Livermore. The 27-hole link style layout has been a blessing for the NCGA, as more than 90,000 members live within a 65-mile radius of the course. Since its opening, it has been recognized as one of the top places to play in the Bay Area. Northern California continues to draw on the imagination and creativity of many, including some of the game's greatest names. Jack Nicklaus has designed multiple courses in the area, including Ruby Hill and Coyote Creek. Arnold Palmer's creations include Hiddenbrook and Rancho Marietta. Among Johnny Miller's works are The Bridges and Eagle Ridge. Fred Couples designed San Juan Oaks Golf Course and Wente Vineyards was created by Greg Norman. From the courses of Crescent City and the Redwoods such as Del Norte to Furnace Creek and Death Valley, from the Edgewood Tahoe Golf Course along the shores of Lake Tahoe to Silverado and Napa Valley, the NCGA encompasses a variety of carefully crafted courses that incorporate the natural lay of the land, continuing to attract and offer the best. Growing up here, you almost get spoiled. You don't realize you know, what great venues you have, what, what fine players you play against, and, and just how well run these events are. I mean, the NorCal Golf Association really was a trailblazer in, in producing amateur golf. Northern California continued to produce top-rate golfers in the 1990s. Jim McMurtry, a four-time NCGA senior amateur winner, and Casey Boynes, a two-time state amateur champion who won four major NCGA tournaments in 1996 on his way to Player of the Year honors. In 1999, Randy Haig, another two-time NCGA amateur champion, was named NCGA Player of the Year for a record-tying third time. And Johnny Miller's son, Todd, who was victorious in the junior championship at Orinda Country Club 33 years after his dad took home the title. But it's not just the men who have made a strong showing. Dorothy Dellison, the 1998 NCGA Junior Girls Champion, would go on to win the U.S. Women's Amateur a year later in an LPGA event in 2000. Another NCGA Junior Girls competitor, Lisa Ferrero, won the U.S. Junior Girls Championship in 2000. Most notably, of course, Julie Engster of Los Altos, who became a member of the LPGA Hall of Fame in 2000. From four founding clubs in 1901, our nonprofit organization now assists more than 375 member golf courses, 700 associate member clubs, and almost 200,000 individual members. For more than 100 years, the Northern California Golf Association has served as the gatekeeper for golf here by promoting and preserving the best interest and true spirit of the game. And that spirit continues today, not only in running the most extensive amateur tournament schedule in the country, but also in the operation of our courses, Poppy Hills and Poppy Ridge. By providing innovative services and benefits like the NCGA course rating system, our award-winning magazine, and the number one regional golf website. The NCGA continues to make the game more accessible for everyone through our NCGA Foundation, which promotes programs like junior golf and turf grass research.
for our association as we celebrate the centennial and look far into the new millennium. The past is a reminder of what the future can be for championships. History makers, great courses, services, and innovative programs that continue to make the Northern California Golf Association the strongest organization of its kind.